we have cried to him. And in our weakest moments, we have asked God. We are celebrating his birthday to remind ourselves of some of the achievements that he, he garnered along the line uh, before he passed on. Diction, language, style, determination, research, delivery, you name it, in broadcasting. He had it all. I learned so much from him that he learned from me. What Romla stood for was try to tell the African story from the African perspective. I can assure you, he was always on the spot with what he had to do. He has not He has done his best. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We are going to draw inspiration from your greatness and your graciousness. And we are certainly going to make you proud wherever you are. So I'm going to say three happy cheers for Tom Lamb. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. today, share a CD or two with someone in need. If you remember his intellect today, learn something new. And if you remember his warmth today, give someone one of his enveloping embraces. If we can do this, then at the end of today, we would all have collectively passed on parts of him to friends and strangers alike, 
in a way that keeps him forever alive in our hearts and in the minds of those who were the recipients of our generosity. So thank you for being here with us today and thank you to his family for sharing him with Ghana and the rest of the world. Today marks the 42nd birthday anniversary of Komlan Afeke Dumo of Blessed Memory. This memory is blessed because we at AUCC, together with numerous admirers of Komlan in various parts of the world, have every reason to remember and celebrate a young, talented icon who gave broadcast journalism a new face across the world. Kamran was born on October 3rd, 1972, to a home one can describe as intellectual. His grandfather, the late Philippe Beho, was a composer of Ghana's national anthem. His uncle, Victor Beho, is a remarkable diplomat. His mother, the late Celia Dumo, once a member of the UCC Governing Council, was an accomplished scholar, a distinguished communicator, editor, and writer. And his father, Professor Ernest Dumont, is an academic and professor of sociology. After Kramon's secondary education, he started his university experience in medicine, but ended up earning a degree in sociology and psychology from the University of Ghana. He later pursued Further education and administration at Harvard University in the USA. Now we are celebrating Komodomo not so much for what I have just said, but more so for the gigantic contribution he made in broadcast journalism within the short period of time that he made. And for which, as an institution, we are proud to cherish and pass on to generation upon generations. Kumla entered the broadcast journalism world like a colossus. From determined beginnings at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, to shut up to fame from the studios of Joy FM, with his catchy, punchy, and searching interviews and comments, and an analytical approach to issues. His morning show drew listeners across all ages. And educated many more. Kobla Dumont was not the first Ghanaian or African, for that matter, to have worked with the BBC. But he was the first to have traversed a seamless path from radio and television, reading BBC news, presenting African business reports, the world today, and focus on Africa. All within a short period of about six years. At the time of his passing, BBC records that he was the only West African news reader on BBC World Affairs. A quote from Comrade BBC writes, Comrade Dumont developed his own style, and the emphasis is his own style, his own unique style, and influenced Africa's coverage across the BBC. BBC's global news, edit, news director, Peter Horrocks, described Komla, and I quote, as a leading light of African journalism. A leading light of African journalism, committed to telling the story of Africa as it really is. That is the Komla Dumo we are celebrating today. He was a gem in the industry and loved his continent as a true pan African. It was therefore no surprise that the December 23rd, 2013 edition of the New African Magazine voted in one of the 100 most influential Africans of the year. Part of his citation read, and I quote, it has been a coming age for Komla this year. The presenter for Focus on Africa, the BBC's flagship, and first of all, dedicated daily TV news program in English for African audiences, broadcast on BBC World News, has established himself as one of the emerging faces of global broadcasting. As a lead presenter for BBC World, 
Timor has considerable influence on how the continent is covered. This is the personality approved by the Academic Board of the African University College of Communications to bear the mantle and inspire current and future broadcasters under our Center for Broadcast Journalism. In, on November 11th this year, the Komar Dumont Center for Broadcast Journalism will be duly launched here, and we are happy and proud that Kumblan's father himself, a scholar of Sinead Dumont, has graciously accepted to be the first chair. What made Komla stand out? With time and through the programs of the center, the faculty at the Dumont Center will unearth the details. But for one who woke up at 4 a.m. every morning, read, researched, and prepared adequately before presenting on radio or television, for one who set high standards for himself and worked hard to attain them, for one who at the age of 40 carried so much influence on how Africa should be covered in the world. We, an institution dedicated to the search for excellence in media and communication, have every reason to celebrate the Black Africa. If you are holding a glass at this stage, Hold your glasses, your bottles, raise it high. <laughs> and toast for happy birthday, Kobla. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kobla Dumont. We wish long life for the ideals and principles for which we stood for in the field of broadcast generally. I thank you for your attention. I'd like to speak very briefly about one part of his life which forever would remain with me. And that's his quest for excellence in everything that he did. And this quest for excellence, I'm sure you'll find that the faculty rules out their programs for the students. To a very large extent, how high he rose and how much impact that he made. But as we remember him today, I am sure that it's an opportunity for all of us to remind ourselves about how we, in our own ways, can pursue excellence. And particularly to the members of faculty who are here as you prepare your programs and as you engage with your students, I encourage you to let that same spirit of excellence permeate. So, uh, today, Komla will be celebrating his 32nd birthday, but in his absence, we know the boss player will still want us to celebrate with him. So, if you may raise your glasses wherever you are, uh, join me to say three happy cheers for Komla. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Thank you. Yay! I look at it, I just begin to see why I still have not been able to get over him passing. Today is the birthday of my father as well, who I lost at 41. Kamala went at 41. We had three children. I was, I was in the middle. Kamala also had three children. He was in the middle. And I think for life is about the impact we make. And I think that's one thing that Komla did. And that's what I'm trying to take out of his life. It doesn't matter how long we spend on this earth. So for ACC, it doesn't matter how long the institution has been here. What matters is what impact you're able to make. What matters is how we're able to transform our continent, Africa. What matters is how we are able to transform Ghana. It's one of the things that Komla stood for. One of my paints as the eve of his birthday is the fact that CNN will show the face of the patient who has Ebola who, can, who comes from Africa. But when VS got Ebola, all they did was show still pictures of them when they were strong. 
and they only show them to us when they were healthy. Unfortunately, I have seen Ghanaian TV stations repeat this. What Kamala stood for was trying to tell the African story from the African perspective until the lions learned to tell the tale of hunting. The tales would always favor the hunters. So for us who are going to be enrolled in this broadcasting school, the honors lies on us to be able to tell the African story. For too long we've allowed others to tell the African story. We've got one young man who started telling it and he's gone. But he'll never be gone. He would live forever. His work will live forever. And I'm hoping that out of this school, we'll get a lot more people like him coming out, telling the African story. The African story is great. The only thing is that we've not had good storytellers to tell it. One who stood to tell it is gone, but his work will live on. Thank you. We clearly are not here to mourn but to celebrate on a day such as this um, Kamala is no more but those of us who had close encounters with Kamala still feel an extension of his energy on a day like this I mean um, when he passed some of us were left in the middle of a lot of projects because he meant different things to different people and so, I was in the middle of writing a book about private broadcasting in Ghana and the lessons, the paths, and the meandering that we have gone through. And so, from time to time, you call me in the middle of the night and then, Chair, do you remember that you'll give me an episode of what took place in, say, 98, and then I'll add it? Believe me, since he died, I haven't added a word, so I don't know what to do with the book. He meant so much to us. Excellent, as my brother Ken said. And when I worked with him, I happened to be his supervisor, but I learned so much from him than he learned from me because of the pace with which he worked, the spans of his knowledge, the depth. When he was with the BBC, there were things that we all learned from him. Today is no more, but we thank the AUCC for instituting this Kumla Kumla project. And we at CTFM, we here also pledge to give it our best support. So you can call us on us anytime once this project takes place. We thank you and we say a big God bless you. It's a huge one for me personally. He called me kissingly father. But he was passionate and emotional about it for a good reason. We related so well. There was a time when times were difficult. And when your friend you get that close to you. You are the DJ head of this. There was a gathering. And when Kamala walked towards us, he stood up and walked towards him. He looked at us. We were discussing an issue concerning him. And I made him feel so comfortable. So comfortable that after that decision, there was a resolution. So for me, for a man who came on air, Pronunciation, diction, language, style, determination, research, delivery, you name it, broadcasting. He had it all. I wasn't surprised the BBC invited him. For a global audience benefit. To the family, I'll say it's an unforgettable loss. Ooh, hurtful, very painful, a long, long time. But AUCC have taken a great step, a very courageous one, which will remind us that our heroes will be honored. Our heroes 
so that we've forgotten. And all of us need to take cue. So whatever you're doing now, somebody somewhere is watching. It's the president of Jesus. Thank you so much for this number. I was one of the persons who had always worked with him behind the scenes. I respected this young man. He respected me so much. Little did he know that his daddy was such a great friend of mine. We saw ourselves very rarely, but unfortunately today, we meet again in circumstances that are difficult. But I'll say to him, Prof, courage. Sister, courage. God knows. We have met here for justice. I have very little because you put me in a very difficult position as a summarizer. And you give me time to speak. But I'll try and say that for that reason and out of respect for that brevity, having made you stand around for so long, I'll go for John Mesa Saba. Incidentally, Mesa Saba died 31. Kwabna went 10 more. There is one. And Mesa Saba said this, and this sums up what we know Kwabna had put for. Let us therefore, frankly, acknowledge our own limitations, not with an intention to rest and be thankful, but to make good our defects and press on to a higher level of usefulness. That is what that young man stood for, a higher level of usefulness. But that came along with selflessness. He burnt his candle on both ends. But posterity and this institution that's about to be launched, well, as Honorable Kutanaka says, will be unfolded in time for posterity to know what a great young man he had been. He had been such an icon. You know, Titsuwobi, Titsuwobi Shire Titsuwobika, the ancient people had something to say and had something to direct. And then Titsi, the same Titsi, said that Mpenyin Bayebi you see, in the airway I know, they call from um, Amechichi, isn't it? I uh, whether he liked it or not, at 41, would not have normally, if he was alive, be described as Amechichi. But he joined the Amechichi. And that's why the Amechichi is telling us that they have something. And they have something to instruct us. He imbibed that and had left it. Since he will be paying for Baye Bimwa Yam Chirmatriado, he has learned it. He has done his work up to us to continue. And I'm grateful that I am associated with this great, great institution to his memory. Please thank you very much. Um, I think this is an important time to, on behalf of the family, as directed by my father. Uh, express a very sincere thanks to the government, to all Ghanaians who have been so kind and so generous in the outpouring of love, the expressions of support in what would traditionally have been the most difficult thing to get over, and that is the passing of someone as loved and as dear as my brother Komla. And so uh, I think uh, it's a real privilege for me to address this audience and reach out to all Ghanaians to say thank you on behalf of my father, uh, the Dumont and Allied families for all that you have been to us, your prayers, your support in celebrating Komla. I know for a fact that if he was here, and I genuinely believe that he is here, uh, and that is what gives me courage to go on every day, he would expect us to smile and laugh at this day because it's the day that the Lord has made. And so in our thanks, I would leave you with a little anecdotal story that I think will make you smile because it's very Komla in its purview. 
uh, I recall when he first started at BBC, at Joy FM, and was starting to progress, and uh, he came to me and he said, you know, everyone seems to have a, a nickname on air. And I said, okay, that's good. So what are you thinking about? So, well, people say I should call myself the boss player. So I said, who's boss? And he said, Mana, this is the one and only time that I could be your boss. <laughs> and that would be on A. And the boss player, he remains in the hearts and minds of so many people. Um, I thank you for joining us. I, I thank the faculty and uh, the students, and those who are coming into this proposed program. These are exciting times. Uh, and I believe that all of the things that are being done by various individuals, institutions, to celebrate and honor his memory will give not only up and coming young Ghanaians the courage to look into the future with determination, but also his family uh, who deal daily with the loss. Uh, I thank you most sincerely on behalf of the family and may God continue to direct our paths. Amen. It is my privilege to have been asked to offer this vote of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of the Board of Directors, the Governing Council members, the President, Vice President, Deans, Lecturers, members of staff, and the students of the African University College of Communication, I thank all of you who have played a role in making this event a success it is today. To all of you, I offer a heartfelt Aiko. Special acknowledgement must be made of our Founder and President, Honorable Kuzayanka, for his resolute determination to bring this initiative to fruition. To him we say thank you. I would also like to, to thank the various speakers today for the various words they shared with us, especially Mr. Kudo Okongi Kama and Manana Sophie Kondo. To the family of Mr. Dumont, we say thank you very much for accepting our proposal and showing your support by gracing today's occasion with your presence. I cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zones. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow morning, when you hear the call code, please know that this is ABC simply saying thank you. As a prelude to our establishing the Kobla uh, Dumont Center for Broadcast Journalism, uh, we thought it necessary to commemorate his birthday. We are celebrating his birthday to remind ourselves of some of the achievements that he began it along the line uh, before he passed on. It is always important to remember and remind ourselves by the ideals, the principles for which he stood, the professionalism that he put into the profession, the high level that he reached to encourage uh, not only current students but also future students uh, from here. When we set up the center, we know that it's not only going to benefit our students but it's going to benefit the whole world. Kobla uh, didn't appeal only to Ghanaian audiences, he appealed to the rest of the world. So we set up today to first 
celebrate his birthday and uh, we think that it is important to celebrate not just to mourn and then also uh, prepare to establish the center in November. Well, details will be known when, when, uh, when it is launched, but we are going to have fellows from all over the world, broadcasters who are of, of repute, uh, who will inspire, who will give lectures, conduct seminars, give special uh, professional tips to, um, to those who are aspiring to be journalists or those who are already in the field of broadcast journalism. The aim is to maintain a high standard of broadcast journalism in this country and other parts of Africa. You know, at the age of 40, this man was a remarkable institution by himself. At 40, uh, very few broadcasters throughout the world have made it that fast. And that's why I describe him as a colossus in the profession. He just burst into the profession and made a mark. He had determination. He researched his work before going on air. He did uh, analysis of, of issues and he was uh, a great inspirer in his diction, in his language, in his, the way he presented. He was outstanding. And as uh, somebody at BBC said, he had his own unique style, which we want to share with others. Oh, I wish him very well. I wish him um, not, not just many more happy returns, but I'll wish God's guidance for him to continue to grow in the, in the path that he has chosen for himself. I'm happy to be here, part of a privileged group of people who are celebrating his 42nd birthday. I, I don't really want to think too much about Formula because it makes me very emotional. Um, well, what I will say to him is what I've kept saying to him each time I met him. Keep making us proud. Keep breaking the glass ceiling for us. And you know, great people don't have to be alive to influence you. True greatness is when you are not even there. What you stand for and your work influences people. So for me, I still think, even though he's not here physically, he can hear us. And what we we'll say is that, look, you've broken the glass ceiling. You've set a marker. And we are in your footsteps. We are going to do better than you did. So we are not going to be intimidated. We are going to draw inspiration from your greatness and your graciousness. And we are certainly going to make you proud wherever you are. So that's what I would say. Oh, everything, everything, everything. I mean, you know, his humanness. A lot of people talk about his being a journalist, being on TV, he's the fashion icon. I miss his humanness, his humanity. Because aside from all the things he did, he was a human being, he was a great guy. He was a good person to know. When you die, it's not your work that you remember. It's not your money or your style or your, the color of your shirt. It's how you made people feel. And that's what I remember about him, how he made me feel. He made me feel I was good. He respected my opinion. He, he trusted in my judgment. And he believed in me. So that's what I will remember and miss about him. Already, so many people have done great things. You know, you see, the thing is, you can only be an original of yourself. You can never be a second photocopy of anybody else. There's only one Komunal Dumont, but there's only one Bernard Abelet. There's only one Suhini. There's only one Manasseh. There's only one rich sky. There's only one Anaba Namwa. I could go on. I think you pull from him what applies to you and add your own uniqueness. Because you don't try and talk like him, it won't work. You don't try and speak like him or posterize like him. Be the best copy of yourself. So that's what I would say. You know my show News File is a show that Komla follows from abroad. And he and one of our former colleagues, Akwesi Sapong, who is also still with the BBC, always do a discussion after my show is over. So sometimes I get the benefit of getting to know what may have gone wrong or what could have been done better. Um, if Komla, my, my good friend, were to be alive today, I'm sure that he would have finished covering the World Cup which he had been assigned by the BBC to do, and I would have been saying thumbs up to him because he'd have brought a very great, unique, fascinating African perspective to that. Oh, a very casual, normal message. The boss player 
maybe he had done one of his interviews with one of the great men on the earth, you know, and it would have revealed something very interesting. And you would say, great job, and what cue you may be taking out of it. So I, I can assure you, he was always on the spot with what he had to do. What I miss about him is his fascinating flair at the interviews that he does. Jesus, 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 Jesus.